What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're checking out a Blender add-on that can generate cities very quickly. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the City Generator is a tool from uh, Andreas Durer, and uh, hopefully I'm saying that right, but it's basically a tool designed for creating cities. And I actually saw this trending on the Blender market. I actually reached out to him to see if I could get a copy of this in order to check it out, um, just to see if it was any good or not. Um, usually when something's trending on the market, it's doing pretty well. But um, basically what it is, is it's a tool for generating procedural cities. And so I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link. So if you do end up purchasing through that link, um, I would receive a commission on that. But um, basically the way that this works is it generates a lot of things having to do with cities. And so one thing I will say about this is it can get pretty heavy pretty fast. That's always the trade-off, right? When you're dealing with something in 3D like this, it can either be like super, super detailed and photorealistic, or it can be lightweight and run well on everybody's machine. This is is a little bit of a heavier add-on from that standpoint. But what it does is it basically creates um, a city based on um, a plane that you bring in. So you can use this in order to generate buildings, you can use it to generate traffic. Um, it's actually pretty cool from that standpoint. So uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way this works. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, um, and I'm in Blender 4.2, so it looks a little bit different. Um, you just wanna go to Edit, Preference, we are still in the add-ons section. We are not in the extensions section. And what you want to do is you just want to go to this button right here. You want to click on install from disk. You want to find the zip file that you download when you purchase the add-on. Make sure you've enabled the city generator right here. And so when you do that, What's gonna happen is now if you tap the in letter key on your keyboard, there's gonna be a little tab over here for city generator. And so the first thing we wanna do is we want to import the city generator. Now you could also try applying it to an active object. So say we created a plane, let's make a plane, let's scale it up right here, object. Uh, apply, rotation, and scale. You could also apply the city generator to that plane, and it's gonna use the plane to generate the city. Note that this doesn't give you a super fantastic result, just because it's not big enough. So we would just wanna scale this up. Notice how when I scale this up to like actual city size, it works fine. So if you had your own object that you wanted to apply the city to, you could do it that way. But otherwise, within your file, you can just um, do a import city generator, and that's gonna bring the city generator object in. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice, even looking in here, um, when you fly around, is it brings in a lot of stuff, which is cool because it's generating all that stuff. It's also, um, depending on your computer, probably going to be heavy. And the other thing you're gonna note is if you toggle, toggle over into material preview mode, especially with the new EV and the new 4.2, it's going to take a minute to compile all of those shaders. So you might sit here and think, and notice how my computer is just kind of spinning and I have a 4090. Um, so this is a little bit slow. Um, it is a lot of shaders, but it actually compiled them a lot faster this time than it did the first time. Um, and then you're going to have materials inside your object, but let's take a look at the settings on this. So if you click on this object, notice how there's options over here for your geometry settings, your material settings, and your light settings right here. So let's start by looking at our geometry settings. For those of you with slower computers, and probably for everyone if I'm being honest, uh, you might want to utilize this low poly preview. Low poly preview is going to take all this heavy stuff, right? All the additional stuff um, that's in your models. So even like your additional parapets, um, all your stuff on the roof, it's going to hide them while you work. So um, if you want to kind of make this a little bit easier on your machine, you can definitely check that low poly preview. Now we have options in here, and this is something that's true across the buildings. It's gonna be true across your traffic as well. If you check the box for isolate, buildings, what it's gonna do is it's gonna isolate it so you're just seeing those buildings on your screen. So again, if your computer's running slow, I'd do a low poly preview and I would isolate my buildings um, so that you can see what it's doing. I'm not going to do that, but that would be my recommendation. And so in this case, notice how you have the option to set your minimum and maximum heights of your buildings. So if we come in here and click and drag, right, it's going to adjust the randomization of your building. So you can set the minimum and max height as well as the random scene, which is going to adjust 
what the overall height of those buildings is going to be like this. Now, one thing to note about this is this is based on a set of rectangles. So this is using geometry nodes in here. And let's see if I can hide. Nope. Okay. So if I tab in here, notice how this is basically just generated two rectangles in here like this, and it's placing these buildings on those rectangles. But if I select it, you've just got your vertices and edges in here, just like this. Well, if I was to take this and I was to extrude it, along the X axis right here. Notice what it's gonna do is it's gonna generate another building based on that new face size. So it's basically using these flat faces in order to generate your city. Now, if I was to do a control R and add a loop cut in here, notice what it does is it splits those up and it's generating those in here based on the size of those faces. So this is also going to affect the direction or um, not the direction, but the orientation of your building. So if I extrude this right in the Y direction, but then I was to move this over, notice how your building size adjusts based on the direction or the uh, shape of the uh, face that this building is sitting on right here. So your buildings are being generated based on these faces right here. Once you understand that, you can do some kind of interesting things. Like for example, if you wanted to knife cut across the space right here, split that face. Notice how then what it does is it gives you kind of like diagonal buildings in here based on that surface. So obviously not quad, but we're not using the face for subdivision or anything like that. So you don't really need that. Now, one thing I do want to point out before we go any further is if we were to fly in here and I'm just going to apply a simple HDRI image from my library. So we'll just go down here. We'll use a Polyhaven one because I have the Polyhaven add-on, which I can link to in the notes down below. But, uh, or actually I have material like loaded. I haven't transitioned everything over into Blender 4.2. But say that we were to drop um, just an HDRI background in here. So we'll just go with something simple like this generic sky right here. And then we were to toggle over into rendered mode and I'm just using Eevee right now. So maybe we should toggle into cycles just so you can kind of see. This is actually going to give you a really good rendered image without you having to do a whole lot of additional work. Now you might want to come in here and adjust some things about that HDRI image, right? So, but you're going to notice even with very little work, just kind of setting this up, you're actually going to get a really good rendered result. So this thing is set up with uh, high quality textures as well as high quality models that are gonna make your renders look really good. This is without me doing any additional work to it whatsoever. Um, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna to toggle back to Eevee. We'll go ahead and we'll toggle back back to just material preview mode. But note that this renders out really well. And if you look at like the textures, for example, on the brick, they actually look really good. They look kind of bumpy in here. You're getting reflections off the glass, all of that stuff. So this is set up to create some pretty high quality renderings without you having to do a whole bunch of that additional work. But notice how now we have multiple buildings in here. Let's kind of play around with this a little bit more. And I'm gonna isolate these and jump them into low poly preview mode. But notice how you can adjust the max and minimum heights of these buildings and then randomize them right here. And so I'm gonna bring some of these heights down because I don't necessarily want those to be quite so big. But then if you scroll down, you've also got the ability to randomize some of the shapes of the buildings, right? So in both a footprint as well as a height standpoint. So notice how as I adjust this, I can adjust my probability of changes happening to the building. Then I can also adjust things like the minimum maximum in here on my building shape. And notice how when we do that, if you do it too far, you're gonna get kind of some overlap in here, but you can use this in order to adjust your building shapes in here. You can also add some additional subdivision. Notice how when you add the additional subdivision, you're getting more of these ins and outs. And uh, we'll turn off low poly preview just so you can see this. This is um, still populating things like fire escapes and other things like that. So notice how as I make that adjustment right here, it's going to randomize that. One thing I find interesting is the ability to randomize your Z shape. And so randomizing your Z shape is going to set the possibility that your building is going to offset and then go up more. So notice how as I bump my probability, notice how this starts giving me taller things, 
taller buildings. And I wonder if my contrast might be a little bit better. There we go, in shaded mode, just so you can see this. But you can adjust that probability, and as you do that, that's going to randomly select if buildings in here are going to um, kind of step up like this. So um, couple that with your height max like this and your height minimum, um, you can start getting some really interesting skyscraper effects in here. Now, one thing to note about that is you might have, and this is an issue with like a real city too, um, the taller you make these, the harder it might be to get the sunlight down to street level. So that's something you could probably think about, but um, definitely an interesting functionality and possibility here. I'm gonna bring these heights back down because I don't want this quite so tall right here, um, but definitely an interesting function for randomization of your cities. And a lot of the time you maybe, if you have shorter buildings, you probably wanna set that probability to zero because you don't really want them to step. That's kind of a taller building type condition. Um, but then you've also got other options in here. We'll toggle our material preview mode back on. And um, let's see, I'm gonna turn off isolate my buildings, but there's also options in here to set the density and distance of things that are getting scattered on your roof right here. So notice how as I adjust this, as I adjust my seed, this is randomly putting things like uh, air conditioning units and antennas, other things like that. You can also adjust your facades, right? So notice how as you adjust your facades or as you adjust your wall asset seed, what that's doing is that's generating different kinds of facades in here. This is working in a way that I have not seen with other city builder add-ons. So I actually really like what this is doing. Um, and then there's a ton of other settings in here, which I'm not really gonna get into, um, but you can set like the kind of assets that are created on the ground floor. So notice how as I adjust this, this is adjusting those ground floor objects. And so you've also got the ability to isolate the streets and adjust what's in here, right? So you can adjust the scale of those streets and say that we don't isolate the streets. Notice how as we do that, that's actually going to affect the building size that's in here. Um, and then you can also set the building spacing, right? So you wanna be a little bit careful because you don't wanna like overlap them to your streets, but you can set like how far back in or out the spacing is just by adjusting the building space right here. And then you can also adjust the corner radius, right? So if you want these to come to a square, you can set it to zero, or you can set it to have kind of a wider radius right here. So again, super cool the way this is set up and it's really easy to adjust. I'm actually finding I have zero issues at all making this do what I want, um, which is nice in a city generation add-on. And so you can also adjust things like your road markings in here um, if you wanna do that um, in order to make them look kind of custom. Um, and so obviously a bunch of other things in here, you know, you can set your sidewalk height, you can set your uh, density of assets in there. But what I really wanna get to is I wanna get down to the um, traffic simulation settings because this is actually really cool. So there's an option in here, this is actually going to do a traffic simulation. So if I click on this, right, and let's go ahead and isolate our traffic. And then I play an animation. So I'm just going to set this back to timeline right here. Hit the space key in order to play it. Notice how this is actually creating a traffic simulation inside of your scene. And we'll go ahead and we'll toggle off isolate traffic just so you can see what this is doing. Um, but this is actually setting this where you've got vehicles moving around inside of your scene. So it's actually doing a traffic simulation in here like this. Now, um, if we kind of zoom in on that, notice how it's not getting like super, super in depth. So you're not gonna wanna use that traffic simulation for a close end shot. But if you're doing something like this, you can actually set this to do like a live traffic simulation in here. And there's definitely things that you can add and adjust, right? You can adjust um, number of cars, you can adjust start position. So if you want them to be further along the path, you can do that. You could also set the speeds of the cars. Notice how it's kind of like randomizing those. So this is doing like a true traffic simulation inside of this scene as well. So super cool from that standpoint, if you want to create like flyover views like this with moving 
cars. You can also adjust things about the materials that are in here. So like for example, if I go to the brick wall material right here, and notice I can set the seed, it's gonna randomize the brick that's placed in here. But you can also, and let's go back to something I like. Maybe we'll go with this one right here. There's a little bit of seaming here, not really that big of a deal once you zoom out. And so notice how you can adjust things like the bump strength. You can kind of see this. If I was rendering it, you'd see it more, but you can adjust the bump strength and the normal strength, which is affecting how rough these look. Those are all adjustable right here. You can also do some additional randomization on the brightness and the contrast of the material, um, which allows you to make this look like it's stained and old or whatever you want. So um, you, can, you can customize those brick materials in here, just like this. You've also got some other options in here. Like for example, you can set your night lights. So say that, for example, you wanted to create a night scene right here, and you could optimize this for cycles if you wanted to, like this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into my shader, and I'm going to really bump this down. So bump this to like 10 and 10, or maybe even less, maybe to like one and one. So I just don't want a whole lot of light coming from that background. Well, now if I was to jump us over into cycles right here, and I'm in Eevee right now, but it still looks good. And I guess in Eevee next, we could do our ray tracing right here, but let's go ahead and let's jump over into cycles because I'm not super familiar with the new Eevee yet. So if we look at this, those lights are actually going to illuminate your scene inside of cycles, just like this. So you've got your lighting in here and you can adjust things like your street light lighting. So if I wanted this to be, um, have kind of a different coloration or something like that, I could adjust that over here. Again, note that that is going to be a little bit heavy. So you might think about like isolating a few things while you set up this lighting and then toggling them all on in the end. But you can set this up to do night renders as well as day renders inside of Blender. All right, so overall, this is actually a really cool add-on. Um, again, it is kind of heavy on your computer for sure. Um, so those of you with lighter weight machines, it may not work as well for you, but I'm pretty impressed with what it can do, to be honest with you. Um, I'm liking what this tool does. It's very customizable, um, super cool. So if you do wanna check it out, I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.